So what is conservation of mass? This is a key bit to write down. Conservation of mass means that the mass of the reactants equals the mass of the products. And if you remember, reactants are any chemicals that are on the left hand side of the arrow when you write out an equation and they're the ones that react together. And the products are everything on the right hand side of the arrow. They are the chemicals that are produced in the reaction. So the conservation of mass, conservation means keeping the same. So the conservation of mass means the mass of reactants must equal the mass of products. So quite simply, if you put 150 grams of reactants in, then you are going to make exactly 150 grams of products. And even at a bigger scale, if you had 1025 kilograms of reactants going into your chemical reaction, then you are going to make exactly 1025 kilograms of product. Because during a chemical reaction, no atoms are created or destroyed. They just swap places. So we can use this idea of conservation of mass to uh, perform some simple calculations. So remember the mass of the reactants must equal the mass of the products. So here we've got a simple equation that says 28 grams of nitrogen reacts with 64 grams of oxygen to make a certain amount of nitrogen dioxide. We, we know that everything on the left hand side of the arrow are the reactants and they must equal everything on the right hand side. So what I recommend you do is write the equation in full, draw a wiggly line down where the arrow is to help you separate the left and the right, and then we know that this side adds up to a total of 92 grams, and you can use a calculator for this like anything in science. So if we have 92 grams of reactants, conservation of mass says, we must have 92 grams of the products, which in this case is nitrogen dioxide. Another slightly more difficult equation says that 28 grams of ethane reacts with a certain amount of oxygen to produce 88 grams of carbon dioxide and 36 grams of water. So I'm going to draw a wiggly line down again to help me separate my left and the right. This time the right hand side is complete with numbers. So I'd add up these two numbers and I would get a total of 124 grams. So I know that in total this side must also equal 124 grams. But at the moment I don't know how much oxygen there is. I know now that 28 grams of ethane plus certain amount of oxygen must now equal 124 grams so that the left hand side equals the right hand side so that the reactants equals the products. So I can simply do 124 grams minus 28 grams and that will give me my answer for oxygen and that will be 96 grams of oxygen which I'd complete the equation with. So here are some for you to try Please write out the equation and then fill in the blanks. Don't forget my trick of doing a little wiggly line to separate the left and the right. And if you pause the video, have a go at those and then come back. So for this first equation, you've got 36 grams on the right. So you in total need 36 grams on the left. And you've just got four at the moment and a question mark. So you know that four plus a question mark equals 36. So if you do your 36 minus four, you will get your answer of 32 grams of oxygen. Very well done if you got that one correct. For the second one, on this side, altogether, you have 48 grams of reactants. So you know that this side must also equal 48 grams altogether. Now 36 grams of that is water. So if you do 48, minus 36 grams, you'll get your answer of 12 grams of carbon dioxide. And in the final question, on this side we have the numbers completed, so 88 plus 36 would give us a total of 
124 grams on this side, so we know that the reactants must be the same. So 124 grams minus what we've got, which is 28 grams of ethane, will give us the answer for oxygen, which would be 90, 96 grams of oxygen. Okay, very well done if you got all those three correct. Now I'm going to show you three demonstrations to develop your understanding of the conservation of mass. In each demo, observe what's happening to the mass and try to explain why it's happening. In this first demonstration, we've got two beakers on a balance. In the first beaker, we've got 25 grams of calcium carbonate and in the second, 25 mils of two molar hydrochloric acid. Take a look at the reading on the balance. At the moment, it's 115.4 grams. I'm going to add the hydrochloric acid into the calcium carbonate. And I want you to try and explain what's happening to the mass on the balance. In this second demonstration, on the balance, I've got 25 mils of sodium hydroxide and 25 mils of iron chloride. If you notice the reading on the balance, we start at 126.1 grams. I'm going to now pour the iron chloride into the sodium hydroxide and you can observe the reading and try and explain what happens. In this final demonstration, I've got some wire wool on a balance, which I'm going to set light to. The starting reading on the balance is 2.75 grams. So as I set light to the wire wool, keep your eye on the reading and try and explain what's happening. So let's go through each of these demonstrations that I've just done for you. Demo 1, there was a mass decrease. Now that's unusual because we've just gone through the conservation of mass. We've just said that the mass of the reactants must equal the mass of the products. So let's try and explain why there's a mass decrease. Well first of all, the reactants you may have noticed was calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. So when we react these together, we can write down a word equation, which is calcium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid. And it makes a salt, which we call calcium chloride, plus carbon dioxide, plus water. You may have noticed the carbon dioxide because you may have noticed in the experiment that it started to fizz. I'm going to write this as a really complicated formula now. I'm going to write it in its symbol format. So calcium carbonate, we write like this. Hydrochloric acid is HCl. Calcium chloride is Ca for calcium and then Cl2 for chloride. Carbon dioxide is CO2 and water is H2O. And what you'll notice is I've put these state symbols below the equation. I've put S down here. AQ, AQ, G and L and these are really important because these give us clues to tell us why there was a mass decrease. So let's see if your explanation was correct. As you'll notice there was no bung on this beaker at all, there's no lid on the beaker, there was no covering. So when I added the acid to the calcium carbonate and it started fizzing, this G tells me that carbon dioxide is a gas. So all of those atoms that turned into carbon dioxide were able to escape and we had CO2 escaping and that's why you would have seen the mass on the balance decrease. If there was a lid on here we would definitely see our conservation of mass working. Because we didn't have a lid we we're allowing some of these atoms to escape. So G is our gas. L stands for liquid and there are very few things that will be a pure liquid. H2O water is one of those. 
and very similar. This looks like a liquid, but it's actually hydrochloric acid dissolved in water. So when we've got something dissolved in water, we call it aqueous, like these two, and give it the symbol AQ. And then we've got calcium carbonate here, which you saw was a powder. So you can guess what the S stands for. If this was gas, this was liquid, then this must be our solid. Okay, for demo two, the mass did not change. And the reactants I used were sodium hydroxide and iron chloride. So this is the word equation which I'd like you to write down. Sodium hydroxide plus iron chloride turns into sodium chloride plus iron hydroxide. And again, I'm going to put that really difficult formula underneath. So we've got sodium hydroxide reacting with iron chloride and that makes sodium chloride and iron hydroxide. And again, I've put in our state symbols. And what you'll notice is this time there was no gas produced. So there's nothing escaping from the beakers. We had something dissolved in water, aqueous, reacting with something else dissolved in water, aqueous, making another aqueous compound and a solid. So this solid cannot escape. This solid was stuck in the beaker, so the mass did not change. We saw conservation of mass. So with this last demo, perhaps the most difficult one to explain, because we saw a mass increase. And there was an invisible reactant that wasn't shown. You may have got one reactant written down as, as metal or wool or metal wool. And in fact, this was made out of iron. So I'm just going to write it as iron. But there was an invisible reactant that you didn't see because this is the reaction that took place. It was the iron, because of this iron wool that I put on, reacting with oxygen from the air and it produced iron oxide. So we didn't see this, you didn't see me adding it, but oxygen molecules from the air, when I added the energy from that power pack, they started reacting with that iron wool. And because I'm adding atoms to my reaction here, that is why we saw the mass of the balance increase. And this is that symbol equation to go with it. Iron, which is our solid, because that's the wall that you can see. Reacting with oxygen, which is a gas in the air, makes iron oxide, which is a solid, which will stick to that iron wall. So again, really, these equations are all sticking to that rule of conservation of mass. It's just that in this demonstration, you didn't see where that reactant oxygen was coming from. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video, then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at gccrevisionmonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at sciencesurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.